foraging here to talk to you today about wild plums. Uh, but before I get into the video, just want to say thanks for watching. If you like it, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for notifications. It helps me out a lot. So what are wild plums? Well, they are shrubs or small trees that are in the rose family. They're in the Prunus genus. And usually they'll reach heights of about 10 feet to 25 feet. There's some variation there depending on the species. And you'll find it growing in fields or open forests along forest edges, trail sides, places like that. And they're really widely distributed across the U.S. There's many different species that grow in the United States. Where I live here in Minnesota, the Canada plum and wild plum are more common, but where you live, you might have a different species that you're more likely to find. Identifying wild plums is pretty easy once the fruits ripen. They are a late summer slash early fall fruit. Uh, around here in the Twin Cities, they ripen in mid to late August. So these ones here are not quite ripe yet. They're nearly there. Uh, usually when they ripen, they'll be like a pinkish or peachish or orangish kind of color. Sometimes they will be a little more yellow, like what you see here, but these are not quite ripe yet. And when they first come out, they're a green color. So when they're green like this, they're very hard to the touch. And then as they ripen, they'll get softer and a little bit bigger, but they don't really ever get much bigger than this. You'll find them maybe one inch to one and a half inches long. So here are some other wild plum fruits. And these, as you can probably tell, are quite a bit larger than the ones I showed you earlier. These are more on the one and a half to two inch long side rather than like one inch long. Now if these were ripe and I picked them and opened them up there would be a single hard seed in the middle like what you find in domesticated plums. So it is a stone fruit like cherries and apricots and other things that are related to it. Also, if you look closely here, you'll see that the plums do have that characteristic crack, the little butt crack, that I, as I like to call it, going down the middle that you see also on domesticated plums. So that will help you identify them. In the springtime, however, is probably the best time to find them in the landscape. They'll be really showy. They'll have all these beautiful white five-petaled flowers, and you'll be able to see them from a long ways off. And there's lots of species in the rose family that have these white five petal flowers, including apples, pears, cherries. So if you see that from a distance, it might not be a plum, but once you look closer, you'll have a good idea of what it is. And if it happens to be something else that's edible, it's kind of a win-win situation for you. The leaves of wild plum grow alternate on the stem and they are serrated. Some of them have more fine serration, some of them are a little bit more blunt. And the shape is basically oval. Some of them are a little wider or narrower, but this is the basic shape that you'll find them in. But the twigs are usually brown or reddish brown in color, and they have these little white marks or lighter marks on them, and those are called lenticels. They're the pores of the tree, they help it breathe. And then the young bark will have that on it too, but as the bark ages, it actually gets like scaly. So the bark I'm gonna show you here is gonna have both variations. So here is a close up of the fruits. These are not quite ripe yet, but you can see that they do have that booty crack going down the middle there. Here's some of the greener fruits. And these are very hard, but you can still see that they have that faint hint of a crack. Here's some that are getting a little more ripe. These are a little softer. And then this tree has several ripe ones. More than several, many, many ripe ones. Sometimes you have to kind of lift up the branches to see underneath there. This here looks like a nice ripe one. And it's got some squish to it, 
and it should easily pull off of the twig. Here's a close-up of the leaves. You can see the fine serrations on this one. And you can also see that they're placed alternately on the stem. And then here are the twigs. So they're this reddish brown color and you can see all these tiny little white dots on there. Those are the lenticels or pores. So here's a shot of the trunk. You can see that it's a brown or reddish brown in color and has all these lenticels or pores on it. But you can see it's already started flaking and as it gets older it'll get even more flaky like this one here. So how do you eat wild plums? Well, as you can probably guess, they're eaten much the same way as domesticated plums. They are more tart. The skin specifically has a lot of tartness in it. And since they're small, there's a smaller proportion of pulp to seed, but they're still delicious. Uh, so I picked this one, this ripe one off the tree over there. And you can see it's got some pink and peachish on it. It's got a nice softness, but it's not so soft that it's like gooing everywhere. It's not overripe. And you can probably see this little crack down the middle here. It's also got a little bit of a white powder. That's fine. It's natural. It's just a yeast that you sometimes find on there. And sometimes you'll find little holes in there like that are from bugs that have dug in there, little larvae that have eaten their way through. So if that grosses you out, you want to avoid that obviously. But usually what I do is just bite into it like that. And then I'll kind of like eat my way around the skin. And this is just if I'm out in the field. If you like tart or astringent things, you'll like eating the skin. If you don't, then you won't. So when I'm out in the field, I like nibbling on them like that. If you're at home, you can process these through a food mill or you can cut them up and peel them by hand. That's a little more time consuming, but if you want to make a pie, for example, that's not just mushy pulp, then that might be preferable. So that concludes my video about wild plums. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned a thing or two. If you did, please hit the like button to my channel and ring the bell for notifications. It helps me out a lot for free. But if you do happen to have a few extra dollars a month, you can head over to my Patreon page. The link is in the description box down below. And through there you can pledge a dollar amount to help me keep producing these free informative videos for you all. So if you can do that, that's great. If not, that's fine too. Either way, happy foraging.